Okay, so welcome to part three of natural language processing in Python. So if you haven't seen the previous two videos, I suggest that you go ahead and take a look at those uh, when you can. This video will be a little bit more, I guess for fun, it's just gonna be about generating word clouds. It's not totally necessary that you follow along with the other two tutorials, but um, it will be at least necessary for you to have NLTK installed. So if you just wanna learn how to generate word clouds in this video and that's it, that's all you should need to do. So as usual, uh, there's for every video in this series on natural language processing, there is a corresponding blog post on my blog, the link to which will be in the description below to this video. And as always, the code for this video, all of the code that I'll be writing going over is available on uh, my GitHub page, which the link will also be available in the description below. So let me just minimize that. We'll get started with part three. So the first thing that we can do here is just import NLTK. Again, I'm going to assume that you have this installed even if you haven't seen the previous two videos. And as I mentioned, the main focus of this uh, video will be to generate word clouds. So it's going to be a little bit of a break from some of the other things that we've been going over, which are a little bit more, uh, I guess, formal in the context of natural language processing. This one will be a little bit more for fun. So if you don't know what a word cloud is, you can check Wikipedia. It's also referred to as a tag cloud. It's basically just a picture that depicts the predominance of particular words in a given body of text, and it's represented in a visual manner. So if you uh, go to that Wikipedia page, you'll see examples. You'll also see examples if you follow along in this video series to see what a word cloud looks like if you don't know what it is. You've probably seen one if you don't know uh, what a word cloud is, but if you follow along, you'll see an example eventually. So uh, I guess I should also mention that in order to follow along with this tutorial series, you will need two other modules installed, and that is word cloud, which will be used to generate the word cloud, and also matplotlib, and this will be used to plot, or I guess graph, visually depict the word cloud. So word cloud depends on this. So if you don't have those installed, go ahead and just say pip install, just go to a command terminal, pip install word cloud, uh, I already have this installed, so I see a bunch of requirement already satisfied. Likewise, if you say pip install matplotlib, that will install everything that you need. Again, requirement satisfied here because I have both of these modules installed. <clears throat> I've also provided links to each of these packages as well if you want more information on either one of these. Uh, word cloud is probably more specific to just generating word clouds where matplotlib is quite useful for lots of other um, you know, plotting or graphing or things like that that you might encounter. So it's a good, it's a good module to have and to know how to use. So once we have those installed, let's go ahead and verify that they work by importing them into the project. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import matplotlib as pyplot. So basically anytime I want to refer to that, I can just say plt dot whatever to access any of the matplot.pyplot functions. I'm also just going to import a uh, word cloud. So word cloud will be a function that will use to be generate that will be used to generate the word cloud. All right, so now that we've got that imported, let's go ahead and define a string, which we'll call text. And we'll just put in a phrase like, all your base are belong to us. And we'll use this phrase to generate our word cloud. So the way we can do that using the word cloud module that we imported is pretty easy. What we can do is we can define a variable, which we'll call base cloud or whatever you like. And we'll set that equal to the name of the function that we imported, which is word cloud dot generate and then we're gonna pass in what we want word cloud to generate a word cloud of, in this case, the text variable that we define a couple lines above. So if we do this, we have our word cloud object, and then we can just use matplotlib, uh, make a call to that to plot what we've generated. So essentially all that we're really doing is we're just, we're doing a few things like turning off the access because we don't need, necessarily need to, sh to see the access in a word cloud. So we're just turning that off and then showing the image and then showing the plot. So if I run this, let me just go ahead and save it and then give it a run. We see this word cloud here that's generated and it has some of the words in the string. More on that in a little bit. It just has base, us, and belong. Notice it doesn't have our, to, or anything like that. It doesn't have any of these other words, but just these three words in this word cloud. So let me comment that out so we don't see that every time. And if we go on down here, let's just make our lives a little bit easier by defining a function, which we'll call plot word cloud. And in this thing, we'll pass in a variable, which we'll call 
word cloud. And then we'll do essentially what we uh, did in these three lines here. So that way we can just call this function one time and it'll do all these three lines. We'll be calling this function a couple times so it just makes things a little bit more concise. Okay, so you'll notice as I mentioned before, in the word cloud that we generated, you don't see any words like um, uh, us, sorry, you, you do see the words base, us, and belong. Those are the only three words that you saw. The words our, to, all, all of those are absent from the word cloud. And that's because the word cloud ignores what are called stop words. So I mentioned that you don't need to see part one of this tutorial series, and you don't, but stop words were defined in that part if you're curious about what stop words are. In short, they're just words that are very common, essentially in English. So words such as our, to, all, these words are very common in the majority of written and spoken English. So these words might be less interesting, especially from a word cloud perspective. So it might make sense to filter those things out. And by default, word cloud does that. So let's say that we don't want to filter, filter those out. Let's say that we want to say, okay, filter out some of the stop words, or maybe filter out stop words that I tell you to. So in this case, we've done the exact same thing. We've defined a thing called the word cloud, and we're setting that equal to the function that we imported. But now we're passing it in this variable called stop words, and we're passing it in as a dictionary. So we're basically saying, or uh, I guess a braced list, we're saying, okay, uh, here are the things that I'm going to qualify as stop words. I just want to and of. So words like all, for instance, which was previously a stop word, which was excluded, I want that to be included in the plot. So same thing, generate the text and then plot it. So if we do this, let's go ahead and write this and then give it a run. So if we run this, you'll see now we have a few extra words. Um, we don't see to and our because those were specifically excluded from our stop words parameter but all the rest of the text are there in this cloud. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit that and I will comment that out so it doesn't print every time. Let's see, there we go. So another optional parameter for the word cloud function is something that's called relative scaling. So basically what this does is if there's a word in the piece of text that we're generating the word cloud from, if a particular word appears more frequently than the other words, then that word will appear larger in size with respect to the other words in the word cloud. So let's take an example. So I have a string here, which is called text base. It's the same one that we had before, all your base or belong to us with a few extra occurrences of the word base. So I'm going to define a word cloud based on this uh, string, and then I'm going to set the relative scaling of this to 1.0. I'm going to plot the resulting word cloud, give it a run, and we see here that the word base is much larger than the remaining words, which only appeared once. Uh, since the word base appeared five times, it's much larger than the rest of them. So I'll just go ahead and close that out. Uh, let's give that a comment so we don't have that printing out every time. and. The next thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to do something pretty similar, but with some other pieces of text. So not just with a string that we have, that we've written, like a short little string like that, but what if we want to generate a word cloud based on a larger piece of text? So if you have seen part two of this series, it's not necessary. If you have seen it, we went over how to access the inaugural addresses um, from NLTK. So before a president becomes president, they give what's called the inaugural address, which is kind of the way they address the country before they actually start their presidency. And these transcriptions are provided to us via NLTK. We can access the text of each of these addresses. And so what I'm doing here in these two lines, 88 and 89, I'm just reading in two addresses, one by Washington that he gave in 1789 and one by Obama that he gave in 2009. And so I'm just storing that in a variable. If you don't remember uh, what this is, or if you haven't seen this, since if maybe this is the first video you're seeing on the subject, all I'm doing is I'm just accessing the inaugural address uh, corpus from NLTK, and then I'm extracting the raw content from this. So I'm, I'm, I'm essentially reading it in as a string so I can process it in whatever way I see fit. So we've read those in, Washington and Obama, the variables now store that data. And what we can do is we can generate a word cloud from both of those things. So let's go ahead and just generate a word cloud with relative scaling on uh, based on Washington's inaugural address. So I've just done exactly what we've seen before, define a word cloud object and then plot it. So let's go ahead and write that and give it a run. 
So there's a few you know words here. The ones that are used most frequently are bigger. So that looks like the words every will and government are quite large. Now, of course, you might want to eliminate the word will and every because perhaps they don't give you so much information. Um, we did not specify the stop words in this in the optional parameters. So if we go back, the stop words are not specified. So um, in addition to in addition to the stop words that exist, so all the ones that are provided from word cloud, maybe we want to include will and every in there as well. So if we want to include the stop words that exist in uh, essentially word cloud and we want to add to those, what we can do is the following thing. We can say stop words is equal to the set of stop words. So this is something that I'm going to import directly from word cloud. So I'm going to say, uh, let's see, I'm going to say from a word cloud import stop words and then I'm just going to define a variable called stop words which is the set of those things and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say stop words dot add and I'm going to give it some extra information here so we notice that will and every were not included in the set of stop words that is provided by default so let's go ahead and add in the word every and we'll also add in the word will as well. So if we do that, we can we can go ahead and provide this list. So we can say stop words is equal to stop words. And then we also have the relative scaling set as it is, is 1.0. So if we don't specify anything here, it just uses the default list. Now that we've specified not only the set of stop words that it usually uses, but also these two, we shouldn't see these when we plot again. So let's go ahead and write this and run it and see what we see. So again, will and every are gone. So we've kind of got a little bit more, uh, I guess, of a, you know, arguably better word plot or word cloud for Washington speech. So government seems like it's the most predominant based on the cloud. Uh, also public, country, present, people, these other words as well. So let's go ahead and close that and we'll move along. So we can do a similar thing for, I guess, for the sake of um, example we can do a similar thing for Obama's speech as well and I guess the only purpose to have this here is just for uh, comparative purposes I suppose if you wish to generate word clouds for all of these um, you know presidents and their inaugural addresses for whatever purpose that gives you kind of a nice 20,000 view uh, foot view of what they said so let's just go ahead and do that for completeness sake so this is Obama's word cloud so again the only thing that I did is I, I replaced the word Washington with Obama based on the variable that we set. And we see that Obama used the words uh, America, will again is very present here, every as well, nation, you, us. Um, so these words are quite, um, are, are, are some of the most, I guess, ubiquitous in Obama's inaugural address in 2009. So I'll just go ahead and close that. And of course, you could also do a similar thing with stop words based on, um, you know, whatever you happen to be looking for in these, uh, in these word clouds. So the last example in this video, we're going to take a little bit of a twist on what we saw uh, so far with the word clouds generated from both Washington and Obama. What we're going to do is we're going to generate a word cloud that has kind of a figure form to it. So we're actually going to generate a word cloud in the shape of George Washington's head. So that sounds a bit more morbid than I meant it to sound. Uh, anyway, if you clone this repository that this code is on, you'll notice that in the file, so we're right now we're writing to this NLP3 file, there is a supplementary files folder. If you click in there, you'll see this washington.jpg. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to put in the words for the word cloud into the silhouette. So it kind of takes a nice interesting shape there. Just I guess a bit of visual flair if that's what you're looking for. So let's minimize that and let's actually get to it. So in order to follow along with this part of it, you're going to need two libraries that you may or may not already have installed in your machine. The first one is called PIL, P-I-L, all caps, and that is generally used for image processing. The other library that we'll use is NumPy, and this is usually used for mathematics or numerics. The, if you don't have either of these installed on your machine, it's easy to get them. Just do pip install pill, pip install numpy, and you should have the modules installed and you should be good to go.
So just for, I guess, completeness, I'm going to put all of the import statements for this particular example in one spot. This is just a little bit easier for you if you want to just copy and paste this. That way you don't have to go looking for imports of things that were imported in a previous point in this video. So all of the imports necessary for the example that we're about to see are provided right here. And I'm just going to briefly touch on what each of these imports are going to be responsible for in this example. So this NumPy, uh, we're importing this as NP to more concisely refer to NumPy. This is a very common pattern that you've probably seen if you've dealt with NumPy at all. We're going to convert the image that we read in, the George Washington head, uh, into sort of an array of numbers, and we're going to process those numbers. Pill, uh, this is the image processing library. We're going to import the image function, which will allow us to actually read in the image from our hard drive. And then this path, uh, this, this should come with your installation of Python. This will just allow us to navigate to the path on our machine where the image is stored. NLTK, we know what we need that for. Uh, matplotlib, we're going to use that to plot the word cloud. And the word cloud, of course, we're going to use to generate the word cloud that we'll plot. So that's our imports taken care of, and the example itself is actually quite concise. So the first thing that we do here is we're just going to define an image variable, and we're going to open it up using the pill image function. So it has a dot open method, which will pass into a path. So if you, if you haven't seen this path dot join pattern before in Python, uh, basically what this is, is it's a cross platform way for us to specify a path of a file on our system. So generally, if you're on Windows, Linux, or Mac, the way in which you write a hard-coded file path, you might use slashes, you might use double slashes if it's Windows. This path.join thing is operating system agnostic. So if you write it on one OS, it's going to work on another. I'm on Linux right now, so if you run this on Windows, this uh, extraction of this path should be uh, should work on your Windows machine as well. So basically what we're doing here is we're feeding in, give me the path of the current working directory, tag that on with the directory supplementary files, and then the washington.jpg file. So we're putting that together to create the path, and then we're telling the pill image function to open that image. The next step here, line 127, we're going to create what's called a mask, and this is just creating uh, essentially an array of numbers based on the image that we read in, and we're going to use that to pass into our word cloud for that to be processed. The next thing is should be uh, looking quite familiar to what we saw just a few lines above where we read in the inaugural address for Washington, so we're just reading that in using the dot raw command, uh, and then the word cloud also should look mostly familiar. The one I guess the two extra parameters that we uh, did not have before was this max words. This is not necessary. Um, if, if you want to limit the maximum number of words in a word cloud, you can specify this optional parameter. I'm just setting that as a thousand arbitrarily. And then the mask is the, in this case, kind of the image that we wish to project the word cloud onto. And we're setting that equal to the NumPy array that we uh, read in from the image. And then we're generating it based on uh, the text that we have obtained from the inaugural address of Washington. A few other things down here, these last three lines should be familiar based on what we saw before, putting in a title just for good measure. And then also this line 133, uh, it's possible to save the word cloud to a file. So if in addition to just printing it out or displaying as we run the program, if you actually want to save it, uh, this line will automatically do that for you. So with that all in mind, let's go ahead and write that and give it a run. So if we run this here, we should see the image pop up. And so it's pretty much what we saw before, only now instead of taking up the entire square, it's to fit here for uh, George Washington's head. So use that as you may. With great power comes great responsibility. Um, and that's it for this video. Uh, and I guess we'll touch base next time in the next video where we'll continue our natural language processing series. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.